Okay, so now what I want to do is zero in on this a bit more. And we're going to go ahead and soft erase this back. Okay, so the main focus of this particular study is I really want you to see a bit more clearly into this area. So this is a popular kind of thing, you know, character raises their arm up, person raises their arm up. And what does the delt do? What does the spine of scapula, what does the scapula do? The spine of scapula, again, like I mentioned, travels down this way. It gives us a great reference point for what it does to the trapezius. On somebody that has um, less overall muscle, uh, and, and definitely on the female forms, uh, you can really see pretty defined uh, shoulder blades. So it's a really good landmark to almost start with because of the reference points it gives us to the other major muscles of the back. The other thing is the way that the deltoid encompasses it. So it goes down here and you get the rear head, the posterior head of the deltoid down here now if I was to trace this completely out it probably looks something like this somewhere in there you're gonna get the medial head up through here somewhere uh, I don't want to be that rigid in trying to explain it uh, a lot of times it's hard to really look at it that way anyways when you're doing figure drawing because everybody's um, you know muscle composition is a bit different I mean there's definitely consistencies to, to know about and look for for sure but uh, they kind of blend together, right? So what I'd rather do is show you the overall shape that I would go for and then just explain to you that part of it is a rear delt, a posterior, the medial, and then on the other side of this, you're going to see the uh, anterior. So uh, a big portion of getting the deltoid right is knowing when you're going to see two of the heads, I'd say that three of the heads would probably be if the arms were fully back, stretched back. And we might do an example like this where the arms are fully back. What happens is your arms rotate back, the deltoid spins back this way and becomes more in full view of the back. So when your arms go up in the front, it looks like you're seeing um, more of the delt when the arms are up, but you start to see more of the pectoralis major go in front of the deltoid and the trapezius is here your collarbones are here just a quick illustration of it but uh, this is a front view of the arm going up Got the bicep in here coracobrachialis in there tricep here we'll, we'll definitely do an example like this because it's a popular pose you got the latimus dorsi here serratus through here and again i'll do an example with you in more detail i just want you to know that when the arm raises up like that your delt spins back. Let me show you like this. It spins back and lands more to the back of the body. And, and you know, you you may or may not notice that, but it's something to think about. Uh, but from this angle of what we're studying now, I really want you to see that it goes around that spine of scapula. So again, the spine of scapula being a very predominant bony landmark to uh, be aware of. And so now... Once we have that reference point, we can see that the delt kind of blends down into here, sweeps up. I find this part right here to be tricky as far as subtleties go. I don't want it to look like a really pointed line coming up to that. It looks too segmented. What this really would be is as I incorporated any rendering, I would want to fade and blend that. Okay, so let me just show you real quick. I would really soften this up, okay? It would be values that would really convey this or just some soft cross hatching. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm trying to show you a little bit more visually, but when I tend to draw things in so um, defined like that, it takes away from the look of it. So you gotta be subtle with your, your renditions. You know, you gotta think of these forms as blending in and out of one another. So, as I draw the arm, I've got the overall volume of the arm. Something like this. So you know you've got a tricep back here. 
the elbow in here somewhere that's kind of bent and you know the rest of the arm is facing away from us. So what would happen here is you would soften up some of this transition here. If the person's very defined, you'd get in some of the tricep definition. But again, you have to kind of be um, subtle with that, I think. You know, even that, I feel that's too much unless that's a, a very muscular individual. So you have to play around with the subtleties of it. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Uh, even back here, the definition on the very back right here is a bit too much. It would be more of a blend, something like that. And again, if it's more with the hatching, you would use some softer lines and just kind of establish a bit of, uh, what I'm thinking about is that the, the bulk and the form is like this, okay? But as it gets to here, it has to blend into the spine of scapula. It flattens out a bit, not you know completely flat, but I have to convey that without drawing these lines. Now we can get in here and do these types of lines, these wrapping lines, and it becomes a lot easier to see some depth and dimension here. And these are great for studies. I recommend, you know, you do this quite a bit. It's, it's something about it just gives you a better visual representation of, of space and depth in there. Um, and then if you were to get very critical of it, bring this back a bit. Let's get rid of these real quick. Say, so, well, I kind of conveyed the, uh, the space and the depth there a bit better than just a, uh, you know, line drawing. But then what if I wanted to really bring out these triceps? You know, maybe there's a good amount of definition here that I want to see. Then you would curve these around uh, each head of the tricep. And then that would blend back into this larger form right there. So again, this is all you know, depending upon what you're after, how much definition you want to see there. Um, but these can be a good way to explain that. So I'm going to bring that all back. Okay, to about right there. Okay, so now, likewise here, I can blend some of these lines. Convey a little bit of shadowing. Okay, so as I work down into here, start to shade some of this back, you know, push some of this information back. And we can get rid of uh, some of our construction lines now. Okay, so the other thing to look at here is the tra trapezius goes up the back of the neck. All right, we know it goes right through here. Blends down into the, the back. Uh, you know, unless the person is very defined, you're not going to see as much of it, but it kind of does like this. It goes around the visually it goes around the spine of scapula, visually it goes up the back of the neck like that. Uh, you can see that as soon as I do that, it looks too rigid in the approach. So I would, you know, I want you to know where the um, kind of direction and flow of it is. But again, I would convey this with just a little bit of rendering. To make it look and feel softer. I feel like I need to bring the face over more. And what's, you know, the kind of the position that's letting me know that is that I know that down here I've got the sternocleidomastoid that needs to come up behind the ear. So again, this is another example of where these different connection points will really tell you when something's off and when you need to nudge something over and move it this way or move it that way. Um, so that's, that's why they're so important. That's why landmarks are such a great aid in getting this stuff right. So the other thing that's appearing too rigid to me here is this line. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to show you that spine of scapula, but I would convey this with a softer transition of the forms, whether that's cross hatching, value study, whatever, I would blend that. So that's what I'm doing there. I would blend this way as well. And then on this other side, it gets a bit tricky because the space is very condensed. Okay, you're getting a little bit of the shoulder, the perimeter shape of the deltoid, 
a little bit of this uh, portion of the back. And then as you see some of the uh, trapezius and the way that it reacts to the uh, scapula, you gotta kind of bend this, um, this form. And again, I think it's better to show that with rendering versus uh, line work. And you're probably even gonna get a little bit of shadow and separation instead of a line down the middle of the back. So again, lines are great for showing direction in a very specific approach, uh, but we have to blend those and convey uh, form with uh, a little bit more. Generally value is gonna be better for conveying form. But there's obviously some styles out there that do pretty well with line work, right? So it's not a, it's not an always type thing. It's not that you have to use uh, value. You can get pretty good with cross hatching and developing it. And cross hatching doesn't have to be pretty and perfect. Um, a lot of times, uh, a lot of artists will recommend that you go with the forms. So you wrap uh, in the direction the forms are heading. But uh, some of it's going to obviously go away from it because you're, you're cross-hatching, right? So you're, you're going to angle it away a little bit for the cross-hatch for the darker tones. Okay, so there's just uh, a little bit of the line work. But again, I just want you to think about this specific area of the body. I think it's very helpful to do uh, lots of studies of this particular area. Uh, what I'll go ahead and do too is I'll, uh, I'll blend this a bit for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and time lapse that. I'll blend this and allow you to see uh, it a bit more clearly. I think that'll give you a better overall study of it. But these are the directional lines that you should pay attention to and the landmarks of this uh, part of the back that really help to, it just really helps to do a lot. We're going to do more angles and versions of the back because it's such an important thing to, to spend a lot of time on. Uh, so with that, let's stop here and head over to our next lesson.